Peace and welcome back to my channel. Because it's summertime, which means there should be more downtime, I'm reading a lot. And I wanted to share my top five books that I think every woman, every mama should read. So grab a cup of whatever and let's chat about it. All right, ladies, so I have a diverse set of five books that I really think every woman would benefit if she read. Now, this goes from spiritual books to books about creativity and kind of allowing yourself to be creative as a woman. Um, it goes to vulnerability books. I have just a whole stack. And I shouldn't have to say this because this is the whole point of reading and growing and collecting knowledge. Um, I don't agree with everything that these authors say or stand for, but I think it's important to read books that challenge your personal um, stance. I also think that you can chew the meat, spit out the bones, as my dear friend Wendy is always encouraging me to do, and that's what I do with all of these books. I don't agree with even the Christian books that are in this pile. I do not agree with everything they say, but I enjoy reading them. So these are the five books that really changed my womanhood, helped me cultivate my womanhood, and I wanted to share those with you. So the first one is Rhythms of Renewal by Rebecca Lyons. Now, if you are an OG member of this channel, you've heard me speak about this book. This book was very life-changing when it came to resting and the Sabbath. I've been a Christian my whole life, but I was never taught the importance, the spiritual importance, the physical importance of Sabbath and actually practicing it. And that's what this book gifted me. Especially as a mother, we go, 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 and we plan, 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 and we're everything to everybody. And we do not allow ourselves to rest. Women, I, they're slowly, I mean, if you're part of the womanhood, you're learning to allow yourself to rest. Join the womanhood, the link is in the description. But um, women don't rest enough. So this book taught me that. And um, a little package that I, and I, and I would love to read a, a little passage that really, like I, I have reread this book, but I always open it up to this page and just say this little prayer. So this is in chapter six and it's about morning routine. And I don't have my glasses, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, meet me, O Christ, in this stillness of morning. Move me, O Spirit, to quiet my heart. Mend me, O Father, from yesterday's harms. From the discord, discords of yesterday, resurrect my peace. From the discouragement of yesterday, resurrect my hope. From the weariness of yesterday, resurrect my strength. From the doubts of yesterday, resurrect my faith. From the wounds of yesterday, resurrect my love. Let me enter this new day aware of my need and awake to your grace, O oh Lord, amen. I just love that. If you're needing to understand rest and ritual and Sabbath and the rhythms of renewal, pick up this book. All right, now the next is a um, autobiography that really, really just, I mean, you talk about reading the right book at the right time. It is The Woman I Want It To Be by Diane Von Hertzenberg. So I read this I was in Indiana, 2015, 2015, I read this book. My tattoo right here is inspired by this book. Um, this lady, now she's a very privileged woman. Her parents were Holocaust survivors, but in one generation, they went from Holocaust survivors to like, she's, she's a multimillionaire. Um, she is so privileged and there's so much of her life that I'm like, girl, I can't relate to that, but okay, okay, I see you. Um, but what I love about Diane, she was the first woman who taught me that it's my prerogative to be who I want to be and to live how I want to live and that I get to, you know, my convictions are my convictions and my standards are my standards and that's okay. She is a woman who created this life that was tailored to her. Mm. And I just think that it, when I read it, it's what I needed to read. Um, it's still, I recently reread it this year. It's still one of my most beloved books. Um, she is a woman. She was, 
She also wasn't afraid of recreating herself. When life hand her, handed her lemons, she would work it out and then be reborn almost, recreate herself as often as she wanted to. She's still alive. She's just, she's fabulous. I was convicted by her love of family and, and love and faith. And like I said, I don't agree with everything Diane did. I do respect how she made her own rules in this life. So let me read a little passage from here. Love is about relationships, yet the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. Who else is with you at all times? Who else feels the pain when you are hurt, the shame when you are humiliated? Who can smile at your small satisfactions and laugh at your, laugh at your victories but you? Who understands your moments of fear and loneliness better? Who can console you better than you? You are the one who possesses the keys to your being. You carry the passport to your own happiness. So good, so good. Get this book if you are needing, um, if you're needing to remember that uh, you, you have a power, you have a power. Uh, you were born with the power and God has given you a power and um, it's okay for you to move in it. Okay, the next book broke my heart in the best way. It taught me how to live with vulnerability and to be free and brave in my brokenness. Mm. And that is The Gifts of Imperfections. If you're a perfectionist, you need to read this book. I'm not a perfectionist, but um, it still broke me. And I, and I feel like if you're someone who thinks you need to be perfect, this book will free you. Uh, it's Brene Brown. I mean, she has cre she has devoted her whole career to vulnerability and, and the study of it and what it can do when we all open up and stop trying so hard to be so perfect. So I highly recommend this book. I'm going to read a little passage um, that, oh, it's hard to choose this one. Okay, I'll do this. Ready? Owning our story can be hard, but not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. Embracing our vulnerabilities is risky, but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy. The experiences that make us the most vulnerable. Only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness will we discover the infinite power of our light. <laughs> this book I also read with the womanhood and it is just... It's a good book. I have so many dog ears and highlighted parts. It's a quick read. So if you're like, okay, I want to commit to a book, but I need a short one. I recommend this one. All right. The next book, the next two books to round it up, I did on audible. So I don't have the physical books, but the first one who Jesus is untamed by Glennon Doyle. Now I do not agree with a lot that Glennon Doyle does and, 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 I don't agree with all of her opinions, but man, did I learn so much from this book. Whew. Hmm. It was like, it was a reckoning. A again, it was the right book at the right time. Um, and, and I tried to read it before. I actually got the physical copy and then I took it to the thrift store because I was like, this book is not for me. And then a couple months later, I picked it back up. I, I was like, wait, I think, I think my therapist was like, have you heard of it? And I was like, I had that, but then I got rid of it. And then I was like, okay, I'll try it again. So I got the audible. So glad I did because it just gives you permission to be um, untamed. It gives you permission and knowledge. I think, I think what I love about Glennon's story is that you can't put it in a box. <laughs> you can't quantify it. Um, and it's very easy to look at her and judge her and say, well, all of this is false because you're doing this, 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 and this, and this. And it's like, no, uh, she taught me that things are very nuanced. Things are layered and that's okay. And we don't know all the answers and we're all just trying to figure it out. And by golly, can we give each other space to figure it out? Um, this book was liberating and I don't have, maybe I can look at my audible and see what I marked in the notes that I made. Okay, so my favorite quote, one of my favorites from Untamed is, I am here to keep becoming truer, more beautiful versions of myself again and again forever. 
Another one was, I see your fear and it's big. I also see your courage and it's bigger. We can do hard things, which now her whole podcast is We Can Do Hard Things, which is excellent. Again, not every episode's for me, but it's, a, it's, it's great for you to get unstuck and untamed. All right, and the last book I read when I was doing a lot of writing and I wanted to nurture my creativity and I think I'm gonna reread it uh, this summer. I have the Audible, so re-listen to it, but it is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now, this is another lady that I don't agree with everything she represents or says, but man, is she a wealth of knowledge. She actually did an interview on the We Can Do Hard Things podcast with Glennon Doyle and um, wow, uh, it's a good podcast. I'll link it down below if you want to watch that episode, if you're into, um, Elizabeth Gilbert, but big magic was great for lighting up and setting fire to my creativity. And, and it's like, a it's like a, the little push you need to know that, you know, that you have a story to tell you have on this earth and it may be on a big scale or a small scale, but you have to chase your creativity and my favorite quote in Big Magic, one of many, is do whatever brings you to life. Then follow your own fascinations, obsessions, and compulsions. Trust them. Create whatever causes a revolution in your heart. Uh, that's my prayer for every woman, that during this journey of womanhood and motherhood and wifehood, you can find something that sets your soul on fire. Maybe it's painting. Maybe it's creating um, pottery, maybe it's writing, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's just like lifting weights, right? Maybe it's creating videos for the world. I don't know, but whatever it is, follow that, follow that and, and live in it. And, and you get to, you get to partake in creativity and enjoyment and pleasure, even if you're a mom. Even if you're a wife, yes, we have these titles, but feed your own creativity at the same time. All right, ladies, that's my list of five books that I think every woman should read. Let me know some of your top books that really changed your life and spoke to your womanhood. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Click that red subscribe button. If you haven't, give this video a big thumbs up. Tell all your friends about it. And we'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.